Hi, Grinches from Namibia. My name is Stephen Bernardes Tkharagai, the Technical Director at the Office of the First Lady in Namibia. I oversee the Be Free Youth Movement as well as the Break Free Anti-Violence Campaign and the Stay in School Campaign. This study and campaign is absolutely critical for the sole purpose that they recognize that young people are not a monolith, that the diverse experiences of young people in the full capacity has to be addressed and when we bring services to young people we have to be able to respond to the lived experiences of young people on a day-to-day -day basis. So Namibia has done incredible work in terms of expediting the reach of services to hard-to-reach areas, off-track young people, as far as their rural areas and really thinking about how do we leverage partnerships to expand our reach and using civil society, faith-based organizations, community-based organizations, uh, different groups, young youth-led groups engaging in the communities and actually being champions of change in their very same areas that they are working in. And that is one of the works that we've done to be able to expand the reach of our services and at the same time realize that we can leverage the expertise that is already existing in the ground and strengthen that further. What we need to do to strengthen Africa's response is really think about our cultural competency. What does that mean when you talk about campaigns for African leaders and African community groups, traditional groups, youth groups, the wide demographics that we're reaching and saying how do you translate campaigns in a meaningful way that helps people to understand the benefit of this work that needs to happen and at the same time be able to take cognizance of the fact that some people may feel a sense of loss or perceived sense of loss as a result of some of these interventions. So how do we help people to be able to transition from point A to point B, which is where we want to be, but they're not necessarily comfortable to be able to take that steps? And how do we start to create an enabling environment that allows people to say, I'm uncomfortable with this, I don't understand this, I, don't know, may, I may not be sure how this is gonna be of benefit to me, and to actually take the time to learn and to listen and to work with community members so that they can be the drivers of change. I think for a lot of times what we focus on is trying to get results done in a short period of time without understanding the experiences of people and the ties that some of our experiences has to our identity and who we are. And having to unlearn some of those things is, in, is incredible and, in, and, and imperative upon all of us to take the time to invest and help people to be able to let go of what is not or what is harmful and be able to embrace that which is actually good to elevate the youth demographic dividend. So the message that we have continues to be the same that we do for our Be Free Youth Movement, which is really saying that young people have to access services. We have to provide information that is accessible to young people. We have to make services more responsive to adolescents and young people. And the platforms that we use for services has to be responsive to where young people are on a day-to-day -day basis. Equally, what we also need to think about is destigmatizing help-seeking behavior. For a long time, what we as as a continent really think about when we do help seeking is we don't take into consideration that if we don't find the necessary help that we need that this can have detrimental health effects on young people in the long run. Therefore, it's imperative for us to be able to make sure that services are as accessible to young people as far as possible. Secondly, language is also critical. How do we communicate the services that we want young people to access? Where do we communicate the services? And therefore, the school being a macrocosm of society is a critical place where young people can use to find services there. And at the same time, you can use that as a pilot to be able to see what are some of the needs and nuances around the demographics and the needs that they have using the school model to be able to frame your responses and programming accordingly. In closing, we need to follow the evidence. We must be directed by the evidence of what is happening on the ground by being actively participating in the day-to-day -day activities of young people. We have to get into the spaces that they are. We have to use the language that they're using. We have to be able to hear on a day-to-day -day basis is the messages and the programming that we're actually doing responsive to what they are experiencing at the moment? And if not, can we pivot to a different direction? And equally, we have to recognize that young people are not a single issue-based group. And in that response, we have to be able to leverage partnerships across the board to be able to cover the merit needs of of young people on a day-to-day -day basis. It is imperative that young people are not erased from the conversation, but they are part and parcel of leading the charge and the change and recognizing that the different experiences of young people across the demographics will have different responses 
uh, required of each one of them. So when you speak to young people that are in the rural areas, and when we speak to young people in the urban areas, when you speak to young people that are well off and, aff and affluent and others who are not, those who have access to education, those who are not, and really recognizing that the monolith that we think about young people does not exist, but within that group, we have to give targeted interventions that actually transform their lives, that is when we're gonna start to see true change happen. And as we elevate young people to be in spaces where they can become their own champions of the work that they are doing, that is when we're going to start to see meaningful change and transformation happen in the development agenda of this continent and the world. Thank you very much.